So the last indication, I'll call it, of what the water vapor is in the atmosphere is dew point, specifically dew point temperature. So the dew point temperature, if, if this is my current temperature, the dew point temperature is the temperature I need to cool down to in order for the air in the atmosphere to go ahead and cool down to the point of saturation to cool down to the point of 100% relative humidity because we said that we can take a parcel of air and cool it down and reach 100% relative humidity. So that's what dew point temperature is. It'll always be lower than the current temperature. Um, so when you cool the air down to the temperature we call the dew point temperature, <clears throat> then you're going to expect the water vapor to go ahead and liquefy and you can have an assortment of outcomes. So for instance, you can have dew form on objects on the surface. You can have fog form. <clears throat> and remember, fog is basically a cloud at ground level. Um, or you can have clouds form. So uh, both we'll talk more about, um, especially the formation of clouds and fog coming up. But um, so you're going to get some sort of condensation at the dew point temperature. So check this out. If this is my current temperature and this is my dew point temperature, right? If your dew point temperature is relatively high, you know, there's not much distance between the current temperature and your dew point temperature, but if your dew point temperature is relatively high, that means that you don't have to cool down very far in order to reach 100% relative humidity, okay? So that the slow, uh, the small dew point a difference between the current temperature and the dew point temperature means you might get fog over the course of, of the night as, as our surface temperatures cool down. The other thing is, like I said, if your dew point temperature is relatively high, then that means your air is relatively moist. <coughs> if your dew point temperature is relatively low, and I have a little table here to kind of show you, like if your dew point temperature was 10 degrees Fahrenheit, then that means you have to cool the air down to 10 degrees Fahrenheit or Celsius, I guess it'd be Celsius, 10 degrees Celsius coming up, um, in order to get 100% relative humidity, in order to reach saturation. So that means there's not much water vapor in your air. Your air is relatively dry. So we're, I'm going to talk about one little gizmo that you can measure the water vapor in the air. But one of the things I've often wondered is why can't you just basically use a cold beverage like you see there, <clears throat> use that as a gauge and maybe throw in some quantitatively track it as to how much water vapor there is in the air. Because here's the deal, you can use, if you can see the condensation of the water, okay, see this, these little, your, the glass is sweating, okay, this is liquid on the side of our glass. And so what's happened basically is the air around the glass has cooled. Okay, why? Because you have ice inside. The air has cooled to the point of 100% relative humidity or saturation, same thing. And so basically then you have liquid forming <coughs> on your glass. So the drier the air, if this air is pretty dry, no matter how you cool down your beverage, you're not going to get it sweating like that. So I don't know. It's interesting. You can use your, your cold beverages to and get a sense for how moist the air is, how much water vapor there is in the air. Um, because you know on a muggy summer day out there, if you have a cold beverage, it's really going to sweat. So. So the, um, the, the farther down, the cooler the dew point temperature, then that's saying something about the water vapor in the air. So for instance, and it is Fahrenheit. <laughs> so for instance, if your dew point temperature is less than 10 degrees Fahrenheit, that means your air is pretty darn dry. So actually then, even if we do cool down to 10 degrees Fahrenheit, the amount of precipitation won't be very much because that air is not holding much water vapor. Okay, that's why it says like snowfall relatively inhibited. If your dew point temperature <clears throat> is greater than 55 degrees Fahrenheit, remember dew point temperatures are always less than the current temperature. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, so if it's greater than 55 degrees Fahrenheit, then you must be warmer than 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so, but this high of a dew point temperature actually can be fodder, give us conditions for um, condensation in the atmosphere associated with um, thunderstorms. <clears throat> if your dew point temperature is about 65 degrees Fahrenheit, okay, that means it's even muggier than 55 degrees Fahrenheit. You know, it's relatively uncomfortable. Um, if you're in a rainforest, um, where their hydrological cycle is a little bit different than ours. They have more, the way I guess I think of it is um, uh, the tropical rainforests would just generally um, have more water vapor kind of running around their atmosphere. Um, they could be very, very moist. And so you're looking at a relatively high, um, high temperatures and high dew point temperatures. Um, Oppressive, <laughs> you know, it's, it, here in the Midwest, we can generally get some really hot, muggy days. And I think we talked about the, the, um, the heat index already in Unit 1. But remember that the more muggy the conditions, the more water vapor there is in the, in the air, then when we go to try to sweat, it, our sweat is going to be inhibited. There's going to be a problem with us, sorry, we'll sweat. I'm sorry, but in order for our sweat to evaporate, that probably won't happen if we already have a lot of water in, <clears throat> in the atmosphere. So that's why um, this is actually an indication of the heat index. If it's really muggy out there, we're going to be uncomfortable. So <clears throat> these look like um, isotherms. Remember we talked about you can take a map and we can draw these isoplefts where there are lines of, uh, that are connecting locations with the same something. Isotherms are connecting locations with the same temperature. But these actually are dew point temperatures. So, um, so for instance, we said that the higher the dew point temperature, the more um, water vapor there is. So here we have some kind of muggy situations here. The lower the dew point temperature, okay, the less water there is. Okay, so that's what that is.